What's going on, everybody? Trader Bryce here with Small Cap Recap. Today for me, pretty average day, average green day, although the small cap market absolutely heated up this morning thanks to VERU. We, I'm sure you already knew we were going to talk about that. Monster Runner reaching well over 200% at one point in the day. I want to say... Uh, not quite 300%, but just like I said, a monster, monster move there. Um, and we're going to talk about kind of why that move happened. And again, you, these are ones that are really, really tough to, to gauge in terms of finding a top uh, as a long trying to sell. But, you know, if you're selling pieces along the way, I personally avoided it this morning. Uh, I, you know, I, I think I mentioned I don't really trade much of the mornings anymore. Um, but I got a great scalp on it in the afternoon, which made up the majority of my day. In fact, it actually did make up my day, that trade, uh, even though uh, I did take some other trades, just chopped up on them, uh, you know, a win, a loss, a win, a loss, a win, a loss. VERU, very easy scalp, and we'll kind of go over that trade idea and why I liked it for that scalp. Ideally, I wanted the breakout, right, of course, but just didn't get it. Um, but yeah, let's dig into the chart. That's going to be really the main one to talk about today. So... Uh, and let's also mention here on the spy, right? Um, the spy got crushed today, uh, and I, I'm sure a lot of it has to do with all that stuff in Shanghai coming out. Um, I'd have to imagine maybe there's more than what I know, but uh, the, a lot of that, right? So with even all this failing action, a big dump here at the end of the day, we still had a monster, monster move. Actually, we even had really two monster runners, although IVDA just looked to be like some straight liquidation. So let's let's really go over VERU, though. Um, the main... So one, first of all, I haven't seen a dip and rip work this well in a long time, which that's promising. So I'll be keeping this dip and rip type pattern on watch for the next few gappers, uh, potentially trading a little bit in the morning. One of the first ways to spot a short squeeze um, is the, the candlesticks. Now you can also see in the tape a bit uh, with with bidders coming back up, you know, after a failure of breaking down. But essentially, so you see with this fake high a day break here in the 620s, uh, on the most volume it's traded all day, we get that slam back down, that wick down from the 620s down to six. I say slam. But Notice how much volume there is on a fake high a day break. That is one of the most bearish things uh, in in a small cap and a small cap stock. Right? Is a fake high a day break, uh, longs are chasing and they get crushed back down. Shorts hammer it down. Clearly, we had a lot of volume. Whether that was you know a mix of longs selling their position or shorts uh, piling in with that fake high a day break, you know, doesn't really matter. Same same theory applies because when shorts get stuck and long sell, and the stock remains at a higher price, shorts are then forced to cover at a higher price, longs are forced to chase back at a higher price, leading to further upward momentum. We see this again right here on this fake high day break, but again, just never broke down. So those wicks, super important. When it set a breakout level on the intraday, uh, high day break level, right? And then it just it it breaks it, but doesn't break down after wicking back down. We're going to see this multiple more times, right? Where even here we get this fake high day break, failure to break down. Um, where was the other one I wanted to look at? Right here, fake high day break, failure to break down, another squeeze. Eventually, it's going to just get exhausted. No one's buying it anymore. It's actually just shorts getting squeezed out. Um, and that's that's one of the best ways, in my opinion, to, sh uh, to spot a short squeeze is by looking at those wicks. When the price, it, it, it makes a great case to buy the breakout again that high a day break i generally avoid high a day breaks but in a case like this where you're just continuously failing to break down of course hindsight's 2020 20, right but anywhere in here would have been a fantastic entry you get this consolidation you have a six dollar risk maybe even a low a day risk uh, and then you can keep going maybe you keep adding through these breakouts and eventually you're probably hopefully selling some into these moves um, but again just great great opportunity for longs here i personally again not trading in the morning waiting for stocks to set up throughout the afternoon i t i found this double bottom after we had set a new low right and then recovered back uh, I love that. You know, I'm not going to call this a short trap by any means, but again, it was just failing to break down once again on a slightly larger time frame. We had this double bottom here 
Uh, and then we had a, this trend line from over here, down over here. I ended up getting into the 1250s, uh, wrote up majority positions sold in the 360s, 370s, got cut out the rest here on this $12 break. Ended up being a nice single regardless. Um, just a very high conviction trade. Uh, you know, I had a very clear risk level after that double bottom was set. I was hoping to get a breakout out of this, but <clears throat> I, j I, I didn't, you know, unfortunately. And that's the risk you're going to run trading in the afternoon on something that's up 190%. Uh, you know, I mean, it, it can only go so far. The, the idea was hope, hopefully that more shorts had been stuck in here. We could get this push. Through. It really needed through 14 for the, like it needed over this 330, 1370 resistance levels, but it just couldn't push through. And that's understandable. Again, it's up 200% on the day. Uh, this kind of pattern though, does work really well with stocks that are maybe up 80, 90% of the day and still have a lot of room to run on the daily chart. So this is going to be a top, top watch for tomorrow, regardless, you know, for a potential day two. Um, hoping it doesn't just ruin it in the morning with some massive gap up, but wouldn't be surprised by any means. Of course, they could drop an offering or something. This is a higher float stock too, which is probably a reason shorts were getting stuck. Um, you know, it's it just betting on it being a larger float probably wasn't, we're not expecting it to be trading this much volume throughout the day. Uh, and it just continuously grinded, grinded, grinded. So Again, great opportunity. Definitely, this is what you're going to want to look for uh, when you're look, trying to, you know, look at a short squeeze. You know, trying to gauge one real time. Um, and again, they just keep getting stuck through those high fake high day breaks, adding in, and eventually you're going to have that blow off top. Which, you know, it, in this case, the blow off top wasn't ever really a blow off. There's no blow off candle because again, the entire time was just shorts getting churned out of their mind. Uh, IVDA, really weird one. Um, we, in a, in a sense, we kind of had a similar, right? Similar thing where you, you get the fake high day break failure to break down just on a larger time frame, And then the parabolic, uh, I'm sure largely because of VERU that momentum carried over. Uh, but yeah, this would have been a great entry here. Let me pull up view up. Uh, my internet connection. Let's see if I, uh, re. Yeah. My internet's a little bit slow in the studio, and sometimes that does affect the charts. But I'm sure VWAP was right around this area, the 320s uh, during this time. So we had this consolidation likely right under VWAP. Um, again, failed to break down. I I thought it was going to be more of a head and shoulders pattern personally, but it ended up just, and maybe that's why it ended up squeezing so much is because shorts were buy, or shorting into that head and shoulders. But same same concept though, right? You get a fake high day break, failure to break down, and then just rip. Again, though, it looks like some liquidation of some sort. I mean, it just came all the way back down. Very controlled, very manipulated. Um, H-O-T-H, I'm going to bring that up real quick. They dropped an offering after hours. This is why I avoid these kinds of stocks that gap up and they just get caught in a range. I hate it. Like why can't a stock... 23 million float. It's clearly rotating float, right? I mean, it's trading two to 3 million shares a minute out of the gates. Why is it not moving? Uh, generally it's because it's controlled. Obviously they dropped an offering. So I mean like they, the purpose did, you know, the, the purpose of their, their, you know, agenda worked out. They kept it up, but I just, I hate stocks that don't have any range despite a big gap up. So I avoid those completely, especially into the afternoon. <coughs> excuse me, allergies are getting bad here in Texas. Um, so yeah, no, those, those I'd say were kind of the three main ones today, but again, really nice scalp opportunity for me on V E R U. Um, you know, got, it was, it was a scalp. I got a two to one on it. Um, even, even after got cut out here. So it was a great trade potential. Hopefully you guys killed it. Let me know down in the comments below if you guys crushed V E R U or maybe what else you traded today. There were a lot of other end of day or slash midday runners that I didn't take advantage of. Um, mainly cause they were literally like midday. They popped at like 12 and I was still in my workout, but, um, yeah. Anyways, be sure to hit the like button. Be sure you're subscribed. Be sure to comment if you crushed it or if you didn't, what maybe what you learned, if you learned how to spot a short squeeze in real time, drop a thumbs up anyway. So anyways, guys, I'll see you back here. Actually, I'm going to be in the office tomorrow. Um, although later in this week, I'm actually not going to, uh, uh, be able to film. I've got family coming in town. So I'll be here the next two days until Wednesday. And then unfortunately got to take the rest of the week off from you guys, but I'll see you back here tomorrow on small cap recap. Hope you enjoyed. See you then. We hope you guys enjoyed that last video. Thanks so much for watching and being a part of the Stocks Trade community. We wouldn't be here without you guys. 
be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Our goal is to hit 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, but we can't do it without your help. So if you enjoy what we're putting out and want to hear more, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video.